Welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been continuing working on this Wagtail social website. It's a proof of concept project to build a social network um, oriented around um, grouping people together, encouraging interaction and collaboration uh, based on the idea of chapters, which are, at this point, they're regional chapters, but I'm realizing these chapters could be um, based on a lot of other um, common commonalities than, than physical location. So I've been, I made the decision today to keep the data model uh, kind of generic and starting with the regional chapters, but leaving the door open to other affiliations. Um, and that's where we've been focusing. So previously I've done uh, user registration. We'll come back around to user profiles and posts, which are essentially chapter blogs and activity streams. There's a few issues as I've been going along. I've been opening issues now uh, to keep track of specific things that need to be done. A lot of these are really good first issues if you're wanting to contribute to a prototype project at this point, but that one that might become more widely useful and adopted or just, you know, in general learning about Django and Wagtail. Uh, these are kind of low-hanging fruit issues. This one's a couple of lines of code, and there's already um, code examples in the project. For example, to create the rich text introduction field and to set the max count of one on the homepage model. In any case, today's pull request is here. Um, it's a few commits, and we'll change 14 files, mainly to scaffold the project. A lot of these just come by default. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at how the um, code works from the user point of view. There's two main types of users here. There's a content manager who accesses the Wagtail interface. And then there's regular sort of viewers, um, community members who primarily interact with um, what would be like the front end or not the Wagtail section. So we have this chapters section here. And chapters are basically um, the data model is a title and some rich text for the introduction that could include embedded media, external links. And currently, this, there is a region field. It's optional. These fields are mandatory. This region is optional. Um, but it's part of the initial specification, so there it is. And it's just an enum. I'll show you the code in a minute. Basically, you can then view a chapter live, and it renders that content in a template. We'll look at that code as well. And the URL structure, all of the chapters are nested underneath the chapters index page, which one of the improvements that I'll get to in a subsequent um, coding session will be to list the chapters group by region or other uh, grouping criteria. But currently, you have to kind of navigate uh, manually, so that's not an ideal user experience. Um, essentially, these are all fitting in the Wagtail page hierarchy. So from the home page, you can create exactly one instance of the chapters index page. And from the chapters index page, you can only create new chapters, which actually shouldn't be the case. Um, I just realized that the chapters should be grouped. No, no, that's it. That is correct. Because I'm not grouping them specifically by region. Sorry for the <laughs> uh, confusion. I, I'm basically deviating from an initial design that assumed that chapters would only be regional, like phys based on physical location, geography. Uh, but I, again, deviated the design to allow for other chapters to form. So yeah, essentially you go to chapters index page and you can add some chapters that may or may not have a region. So that's essentially the code. Um, and we'll look at how Wagtail, uh, the code that gets Wagtail to generate this chapters interface, as well as the form, the chapter creation form. 
as well as the templates that render the output. It's not a lot of lines of code, mainly imperative, because um, Wagtail does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So the main files here that we're going to take a look at in our base pi, I just had to register this new chapters app, which essentially Django projects are mainly built around the idea of apps, which are self-contained bundles of code and data kind of access models. And so we created a new chapters app, some data models, templates to render those on the front end, and a way to register those with the Wagtail admin interface to give us a nice listing of those with filtering and searching. So we registered our app. We defined, in this case, two models. The first is a, uh, on the screen here is the chapter. Django 3 has introduced uh, text choices new type that lets you limit, in our case, the choices for region. So I'm defining these region choices as text choices here, and they're basically continents with localization strings. The two fields on the chapter page model. This is essentially, this chapter is inheriting all the functionality that comes with the Wagtail page model, which is quite extensive. It also includes title and uh, publication workflow, and page slugs, and, and many other features, search engine optimization, whether or not it should be appearing in menus. So quite a rich model to inherit from. So we have an introduction, which is a rich text field, and a region, which is a character field from the Django default model field types uh, that constrains the field to the choices that were also defined up here and maximum length which is a required property it's optional I wanted it to be optional in light of the uh, choice to allow other types of chapters to form than regional chapters uh, essentially what you do with page models there's basically regular Django models so you define fields and this is all just conventional Django code Django 3 code 3.2, I think. I'm not sure when this was introduced, but relatively recently. And then the parts down here are wagtail specific. So these get kind of um, migrated into the database and they become database columns. And I think these choices also, also they're, at least at runtime, they're used to v validate the data. Then we need to tell Wagtail how to render the edit form rather than writing the form template and um, handling the data in the form submission ourselves. Wagtail will actually do that uh, through this content panel. So when I'm adding a chapter, um, by default, Wagtail includes some content panels for page models, that, such as this promotion tab and settings. So if you want to have a pages that expire or are private, you can do those here, as well as I think password protected. Um, notice also there's this new commenting feature, inline commenting. Um, I won't go into depth, but uh, Wagtail has just become a really rich, it's becoming really rich over time. The documentation is improving, the um, code developer experience is really excellent, and, and the editor functionality is, is growing. So anyway, we render the basic page panels, and then we Tell Wagtail to render appropriate field panels for the fields we've defined here. And it knows that since the introduction is a rich text field, it's going to render this rich text editor, which includes the, again, media embeds, and linking, and things like that. And then it knows the region field panel is a character field with choices, so it's going to render those choices as a dropdown. All of that was just two lines, you know, a couple lines of code, basically. I didn't have to write anything on the templates. It's, it really gets you far along very easily. So once we've created chapters, we want a way to render them. And essentially what we've done is we've got two templates, one for the chapter, which um, extends from our base template that has our navigation menu that we created in the previous session. So you can log in, log out, change your password, 
change those text, and I need to lo start localizing texts now to get in the habit of that. And what it does is it really just puts the page title here in the, in the HTML page title, so it renders as the tab title text. We're importing these wagtail core tags so that we can render rich text content basically unescaped. I'll just change this real quick to demo. But in this, we have a level one header that also renders the page title, so those are the same. And then we have this introductory text, which if I save this and I refresh the page, it's um, showing escaped HTML. So this rich text editor lets you input a subset of HTML. And by default, it'll um, Django will treat it as unsafe. But when we run it through a filter, you pipe that escape or the field content essentially or through this rich text filter, it will unescape it, the subset of HTML and render it. And if I go to Finland, for example, uh, well, let's see. Where the chapters page is where I've actually edited the rich text. The chapters index page is basically the same code because I used the same fields for both the chapters index model and the page, um, chapter model. So we've got a title and introduction text. And for consistency, I should probably just change this here as well. And the last thing we did is tell Wagtail, rather than having the user go, you know, home, chapters, and then adding chapter perhaps through this browsing interface, which is nice and gives you some additional features. We wanted to define just like a top level view of these chapters, which also lets you add one since they're really only going to be added in one place. Interesting. So the URL structure here is also auto generated. In order to define or register um, a model and ad admin interface with Wagtail, you just need a couple of imports and then bring your model in, create a class that extends from the model admin. So we got our chapter model admin. And you tell it what the model is, what text should appear on the menu, the icon that should appear on the menu. Chapters are basically groups of people where it should appear a weighted list. I think the bigger this number, the farther down the list it'll appear. And it gives you pretty fine grained control over grouping if you, in case you have a really complicated menu. You can also, by the way, do fly out menus. It's like sub menus, which we didn't need in this case. Um, whether or not it should appear in the settings menu, I think this should be false by default, but anyway, I put it there to be explicit. Uh, whether I think it should appear from this page explorer right here, so these chapters wouldn't appear at that. Level, I think. Uh, I can test that real quick. If I refresh the page. Pages, home, chapters. Yeah, so there's no. And this is just declarative code. And all of this is handled by Wagtail automatically. Then we have what's called the list display, which is going to essentially display a table of uh, content uh, where you specify which columns. Um, fields to display. So we've got our region. I think uh, region makes sense because it's the gl to display first because it's the bigger entity than, um, although again, we're moving probably uh, possibly away from having region specific um, chapters. This filter is auto generated. I tell Wagtail which field, and it knows that since it's an enum of allowed values to just print them out here and then I can it's not going to be very impressive because both of these are in Europe but I can click the button and show only content that matches that filter and likewise I can search so if I search for land you won't see anything but if I search for Finland you'll see that Finland appears now if I search for land you'll see that both Iceland and Finland appear if I had more content it would have filtered this out so you have a basically a, a fuzzy text search as well, based on, in this case, the title field. If you have multiple fields, though, you can have that search go across them. Like, 
one example would be if you're dis designing a constituent relationship management uh, app or you have a orders app where you have customer name and maybe address and you want to search for potentially their address or their name, you could um, search across fields. I think in, even to related models. It's really powerful, but I don't want to make any statements that I'm not totally confident of, so at least you can access the primary model fields in this search interface. And I'm sure you, there would be a way you could use hooks or something like that to give you a way to traverse models if you needed that to search functionality here. Uh, for example, creating a virtual field or a private, like a sort of a private field that gets populated uh, based on the database hook when you save. Um, anyway, the final step is just to register this with uh, Wagtail. So it has this method here that, or this function that takes uh, one argument is the class of the model admin. And again, these you can create um, groups, uh, model admin groups that'll actually let you do a fly out menu and have several model admins under a common umbrella. In any case, at the risk of going long, I better just uh, finish up this recap. This is the final file. The, the pull request here is on GitHub. The project is open source on GitHub. So even after this pull request is merged, you can feel free to um, Check out this code, play with it, adapt it to your needs. Um, hopefully this prototype will prove useful and, and take on a life of its own. I don't know at this point. Uh, it's just a proof of concept. So this has been a codebase.org live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this or other projects, stop by codebodies.org. There's a lot of ongoing hangouts uh, on pretty much a daily basis for all sorts of uh, topics. And there's also a lot of groups that you can join to study and help other people along their learning journey, um, various technologies. And the codebuddies.org website is also open source on GitHub. So it's been a really great community to participate in. I've certainly learned a lot and I would like uh, to see the community grow. So it would be great to see more members like yourself when stopping by. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day and stay safe out there.